So we are almost fully set up in the new space. The only thing I have left to do is set up the streaming computer and the cameras. Tass asked me, he came in last night when I was editing. He's like, hey, you want to stream some Dead by Daylight? And he goes, why do you suddenly look panicked? <laughs> and I was like, oh, because I just realized that all the streaming equipment is still in a suitcase in the closet. He's like, well, okay, we don't have to just stream. It's, hey, shh, it's fine. It, and, I did, and I went, oh, God, it's been so long since we've done that. He didn't I'm, appreciate uh, me petting him, but, you know, yeah. it helped. He he did on the inside. I mean, it really, <laughs> yeah. it did calm me down. Uh, I'm a lot more equipped to handle that now because on one of my more responsible decisions I've ever made, I went ahead and opened a new line of credit to buy a gaming PC recently. Oh, <laughs> so, right. well, there you go. Yeah. So uh, I've got a real monster of a machine now. So what are you going to play? Uh, I mean, right now, my main motivator to buy it was Tony. Our friend Tony bought me Black Ops 4 as an early Christmas gift so that I can start playing the uh, Battle Royale mode on it with them. Mm, yeah, and I was that. like, oh, thank you so much. And I started playing with them. And like the game's like, hey, your computer can't do this. Just FYI. I was like, shut up, game. Like, I can do this. And I started playing and it was just like, no, nah, no, for real, though, you can't. Your computer can't do this. Oh, no. So I would just like crash out of games or like any time a firefight started like if there were more than my team holding still on the screen you were watching a flip book i was watching yeah i was watching stop motion animation <laughs> and here's a black ops powerpoint yeah so i just it was it was terrible and i was like i i feel real bad that i can't play this game with them at all so i went and letting the team down yeah i was yeah. i was letting the team down tremendously so oh. black ops i mean overwatch never can never give that up for too long for some reason uh, we haven't played Sea of Thieves in an eternity. Yeah, but that's true. We need to I get back probably, up on that. Yeah, I could probably run that pretty good. Stan now. the Banana Man Callahan needs to sail the seas, baby. Mm -hmm. He must rise again. Uh, you know, we did learn something new about Stan and his ship, right? About the yeah. flag that you were flying. Yeah, we did. We always flew the yellow flag on our ship. And uh, <laughs> oh, no. uh, the other night in doing just some miscellaneous pirate research, Tass stumbled upon what the yellow flag means. Oh, boy. Yeah, so essentially... <laughs> That's something that they used to fly when there were sick people on board. So it was kind of a warning. Don't come near this ship. Everybody's sick or dying. I assume yellow because everybody's skin had jaundice and, you know, just bile I guess, I all over the place inside um, their bodies. It was but, the color of their phlegm. Yeah. Oh, gross. Ugh. But apparently uh, also just pirates and people in general would fly that as well to try to be sneaky to be like oh don't come near us we're sick and and then boom just hope there's that, the jolly roger yeah oh yeah so either to get close or just to keep people from coming near them nice. yeah so that's what we're going to pretend we were always doing is that Whole it was time a, is that it was just like a, oh no they're sick people please don't mess with us we're real bad at this game but really we we're just like lol bananas yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't stop anybody from sinking us as Not even much a as they wanted. <laughs> That's very true. I, the thing that bothers me the most about that game is that no matter how hard I played music, as you guys were doing the important <laughs> roles on the ship, like my Inspire Courage just never seemed to work. I think the buff system is broken that game. Yeah. No, no, listeners. I need you to understand everything he just said is not a joke. <laughs> Actual real life moment. A big old galleon is coming towards us and he's like, don't worry. And he runs to the end on the, on the mat or the, um, What's the word? The, the, the bowsprit. The bowsprit. Yeah. And just gets out his hurdy gurdy and starts playing as na, we're na, being na, charged. Na, 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 na. <laughs> there was there was also the moment that in trying to play the hurdy gurdy and be useless, he accidentally murdered an ally that had hopped on our ship to help us. Oh, that's true. <laughs> he had his the the boys who live below decks. Oh, the remember? boys. And he had pulled out his sword instead of his hurdy gurdy and clicked and held trying to get the music to go and he's he's like why is the music going and then just lunge stab that kid dies and he goes oh no <laughs> i forgot about that all right well before we get into the game uh, there's something i want to mention so there are two sounds that everyone heard last episode it was this and this so I didn't tell you guys what that was beforehand because I didn't want to spoil anything. But now that we're kind of into the story, it's safe to tell you. So this sound means that we are going back in time to tell Tass's story. And this sound means that we're going back into the present time with Jake and TJ. So why did I do that? Why did I not just tell the story in chronological order? Well, that's because... They weren't recorded at the same time. Jake and TJ recorded the entirety of their story before we recorded any of Tass's story. So sometimes when you hear them reacting to things going on in Tass's story, that's because they made choices not knowing what was going on. Part of this I want to bring up, too, is that 
when they're making choices like the choice they made last week about Damien, they didn't know what Tass knew because Tass hadn't played that yet. So I don't want anyone out there thinking, wow, what a bunch of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> they sure don't like that guy. And he just said he was helping. So they, they had no idea what Tass's side of the story was until after they had fully played through their side of the story. So, uh, so with that, let's let the recap roll. I don't know that we can best her when she has that ability. So first and foremost, I would rather just go try to talk to her and see if there is a a simpler way we can get this without having to rob her or fight her or try to kill her or swindle her. So I think we make a trip to Chicago. So yes, I will absolutely make a barter with you. I can give you back the soul of your friend if you help me ensnare Damien O'Doyle. Look, I don't especially like Damien. He's a demon. He's not a good person. He's helped us some, but not not for nothing. I'd feel a little bit bad about crossing him because he's done us a favor and we haven't done him one. Well, TJ, let's go stab an ally. Hey, I don't suppose you uh, want to make a wager. What? Do you want to, I don't know, maybe, maybe bet something? What the hell are you talking about? I'm dead. Yeah, that's true. And you're dead now, so you're a soul. So whoever gets your soul first gets it unless of course it belongs to someone else like if you lose it in a wager what the hell do we do now i'm gonna play a message for you that someone gave me about 30 years ago when they made this bargain with me to collect your soul and a woman appears on the screen and you recognize her it is lana kane gregory does not want you dead because you've upset him gregory wants you dead because he's going to try to bring you back as the chosen Because he wants to bring you back as the Chosen. Because he then wants to kill you again and collect the soul of the Chosen. In less than 24 hours, he will collect my soul. And he will only need one more to complete whatever it is he's trying to do. Anastasia will take this very hard when I die. She will blame herself. She was chosen by the gods to protect me, and she couldn't. It's even a little more painful because we've been married for 20 years. And if you think it's painful to let down the person you're chosen to protect and save, Imagine if it was also the person that you had pledged your life to. She will go down a bad path, but that's too much about me. I don't know what you're supposed to do with this information. I can't tell you to let him do it because while the power of the Chosen may be enough to help stop him, but you'll also be exactly what he needs. So if he can kill you and collect your soul, he'll have everything he needs to finish his plan. There are people in your future who can join with you in the moment of resurrection they will fill the crystal and activate it. One of them will lead you to be the chosen. The other one, I can't see. Their death isn't set yet. I wish I could tell you more or give you a clear path, but everything past the point of your death is a little hazy. But I hope this helps in some way, and I'm sorry I couldn't stop him. And the video ends. Whoa. Holy shit. Yeah, right? Were you given anything else? I was. Uh, I was given a list of... If this, then that, like instructions that, you know, if this thing happened, then I should do this thing. And then a set of instructions that I was only allowed to talk about it if it did happen. Even with me? Yeah. Well, I mean, most of it involved you. Okay. So. Like, okay. So like I was, I can tell you this one because it happened. I was supposed to drive down Mulberry Lane last fall at a specific time and not stop. And if I hit someone coming out of the Halifax Theater that night. I was supposed to drive down the same road two days later at a specific time. (laughs) And if you recall, I believe that's the two times I (laughs) ran into you guys. Yep. I uh, vaguely remember getting plowed by a vehicle. Yes. Okay. Um, I guess that throws a lot of things up in the air. I, I can't just move on. I mean, if he's doing this, if he's planning this, then there are others out there that could get this. Maybe somebody that doesn't know that they have it and doesn't know what's coming. Yeah, it sure seems like it's a, uh, what do they call those, a recessive gene? Yeah. Just something that's inside of you and it might activate, it might not. Right. Oh, God. I have to make it happen. Because if someone that doesn't know that it's coming, if it happens to them, then he's going to get their soul. He's going to get another chosen. Did you recognize her? Like, it seemed like you weren't as surprised when her face came on the screen. Yeah, um... Uh, It's kind of a long story. The boys and I met her in my dream. She was in a crystal in my head already. What'd she say to you then? There was a lot of things. Um, 
you know, we found out some information about her, that her soul is trapped. We know it was in some submarine that Nash apparently had and a few other things, but, you know, that was the, the big thing. She was trying to warn us. She was trying to warn us of the visions we saw in the dream, uh, lots of things that had already happened, some things that were supposed to happen. And, um, you know, we asked her a few questions. We tried to figure out how to locate her. And, um, yeah, the last thing that she told me was find the previous divine. Well, I guess to find her wife. So, hey, man, you want a road trip or something? Yeah, um, I suppose now that it's over, it may not matter. But she did hire me to collect one other soul and to trade it. Okay, what was that about? Uh, there was some girl in Hawaii who died named Rachel. Ugh. What was that? Uh, I sort of helped kill her. Oh. She was a vampire. Oh. Well, I collected her, and the bargain that she made with me for that was to trade her to, uh, well, to a woman who deals in information and artifacts. Okay, what were you trading her for? It could be whatever I wanted. She just seemed to want her to end up with this soul. Okay. It would be extremely useful to talk to her. You don't have her anymore? No, I traded her. Oh, shit. Um, I mean, she was in Nash's inner circle. I mean, she has to know so many things. There was another vampire. I'm not even going to name him. The less you know, probably the better for the moment. But we technically have a contact in Nash's circle, but he can't tell us much. He can't do much. Um, because of compulsions, but oh my god, Rachel's dead. She can't have a compulsion anymore. She can't have any tie to Nash. If I could talk to her, we could find out, God only knows, we could find out so much. We could find out locations. The, the potential is is insane. I think you got to trade back for her or something. I don't think she's going to trade me back, but I mean, I could always trade you to her. And I know she's been trying to get her hands on three souls for a while. Okay, well, I mean... If it'll get me in a room with her, with Rachel, I mean, that's worth a try. That's worth the attempt. But getting me back is the is the hard part, obviously. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. What? Well, there are these two guys. Uh, you might know them, Jake and TJ. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. If we could somehow plant the seed in their head that it'd be possible to get me back, there's a chance that they could come up with something to trade for. That's true. And uh, they do owe me a favor. Oh, God, they sure do. I'm dead, so I, I'm, I'm off of that, right? Yeah, but I think that, uh, I think you're going to repay it in your own way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there's a uh, piece of information that I've wanted for a long time from Strom. She's the, uh, the woman who keeps the information and the artifacts. If I could get one more soul, I bet she'd trade me for that information. And I think I already know the answer to the question I'm going to ask her. And if I'm right, your friends paying back the favor they owe me will put them right next door to you. So where are you going to try to set this exchange up? Honestly, I feel like the more mundane it is, the less suspicious it is. So just like a side street, an alley somewhere in this in Chicago, away from her place far enough that if we ran, this is where we'd feel comfortable stopping and just shoot him a text and be like, we got it. Meet us here. The car appears in the alleyway. He is right out of the car. Why didn't you call me while you were inside? Were we supposed to call you while we yes, were Yes, you were supposed to call me as soon as you got it. Oh, no, sorry. I wasn't... I guess I forgot that. We just got the hell out of there. But he's in there. Who's in there? Tass is in there. He's in there with the other two souls. Well, That's what's in that back room. Once you were inside and you had my thing and you called me, we could have gotten him out. Why didn't you tell us that? Demons, the way our magic works is it has to be a trade. We can't do anything for free. So I found a way around getting you to the place where you could get Tass out. You were going to be in the room with him, and I wouldn't have had to give you anything. You'd have been there helping me. Oh. God damn you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay, well, we've got the necklace. You do? Yeah. Can I see it? Shit. I'm going to give Damien the necklace, and that's all. He asked to see it. I'm going to hand it to him. Losing this is what caused my corruption. Now that I can free her, I can, I can get my redemption. Uh, oh, shit. I am. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. I feel like total garbage. <laughs> I got egg on my face. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to just tell Damien the truth. Um, Damien, I have something to tell you. We were about to just 
turn on you full on. And I'm very sorry. What? I'm sorry. Why? She's convincing. Look, Wait, uh, you went and talked to her? Yes. Why? What part of talking to her is a heist? None of it. I and planned you a heist. <laughs> well, that's well, planned us a heist. Yeah. I, I gave you blueprints. I gave you locations of items. Look, I appreciate that. And right now, I appreciate everything you've done more than I've ever appreciated it. And I cannot explain to you how bad I feel about even considering turning on you. We had a montage where we hung out and drank slushies together and we, worked on the car. Boy, we did. Oh, God. I went, Humans are the worst. I know. Look, I went and talked to her because I just thought talking to her might get it done. That without having to fight or sneak, you know, without having to make a new enemy, we might just get out of this. And then she sold us on you being a bad guy. She's, she told us that you'd given her tasks. And I mean, come on, without knowing what you've told us now, that sounds real bad. And again, without knowing how demons are made, you're a demon. Typical knowledge says that you're a bad guy. Yeah, but I'm a speed demon. I know, and that's metal as hell, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, and I am with you again. I should have known better. You dance with the one that brought you. I shouldn't have thought about betraying you. But now we need to turn this around, and we need to get one over on her. How? Like, what's the deal you made? Uh, the deal we made was to bring her your soul. I like look at TJ. Was it soul? Essence? something something i will produce the knife to trap you in this she would trade you and also the magic bow and arrow that i got from that other reality for all three of the souls that she currently has you're gonna stab me i was god and again there were options and i just figured i should do the one that i might pull off the most quickly i didn't it made sense at the time and it sounds really bad now hey the worst one, the one TJ wanted to do, was get you to drink a poison slushy, which I thought just spit in the face of our relationship in a what real mean way. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking throw me under the bus, why don't you? <laughs> Shit. God, sandbag the hell out of me. Uh, who's the demon here? Oh my god. <laughs> All right, I'll admit it. I... <laughs> I want my friend back, and I would have done anything for my friend. Oh, yeah, anything except follow the plan that I gave you to trade that information. Oh, do anything except a little hard work. It was it was real, real hard. We went in circles. We chased our tails so much trying to figure out how to outplan a precog. The good news is that I think we've broken her vision of the day. When did we do that? When I pulled the bow out of nowhere. Remember, she was surprised. Oh, she can't see pocket dimensions? Like, I guess it exists outside of time. It, it must. Uh, yeah. So if we wanted to try and infiltrate now, the bad news is she's home and she knows us, but I think the good news is she doesn't know exactly what's coming anymore. Oh, like you guys finished the plan for the heist, like you got all this stuff with you? Did you shut down the runes? Uh, not exactly. In our decision to just go ahead and talk with her, we just, you know, didn't prepare for it at all. Uh, however, now we have the knife. And we're wondering about this knife, actually. Is there any way that we could sneak you in with this knife? No. Oh. You literally just told me you were going to betray me. So then we can't use the knife on you, obviously. It, yeah. Okay. So, that's Jake, a, go ahead and put this away. I'll take that. Actually, Damien, do you know? She just said it would trap you. Do you know how, how that works? If we did it to her, would it trap her? It depends what she is. Isn't she just a person? I thought she was just a person who was really resourceful. I mean, she's been around a while, and those are some crazy items that she's got. I don't know any human that's ever been that resourceful. Oh, man. What else could she even be? If she was a demon like you, would you know that? Would word have traveled? Yeah, I think I'd know. Well, if we do decide to go in and fight, it wouldn't hurt to at least try to stab her with this and best case she's trapped in it and worst case we stabbed her so that's cool plus if she's weak to silver yay still got a cerberus and a knight to deal with as well and then also the magic doors and the runes in the four corners of the building i wonder if killing her disrupts her magic it's a good question let's ask rev okay and so i uh i pull out my phone and i text rev hey buddy Whoop. what <laughs> <laughs> if we were to kill the woman who has Tass's soul. Oh, by the way, the woman has Tass's soul, not just the necklace. If we kill her, would it 
disrupt all the magic inside her apartment? No. No. (laughs) (laughs) I'll call him. What? (laughs) I'm trying to research resurrection here. Aren't you guys trying to get our friend's soul back? I, yes. And that's why I'm calling you because I have a question. What's your question? Would it disrupt any of the magic? If she has ongoing effects like the the doors, she's got like the warded doors or the door that you can only get out of if she tells you you can. Yeah, wards would not be destroyed. Those are essentially artifacts. They're super weak, but but yeah, anything that was specific to her, you know, maybe getting inside of the door that requires her DNA, getting inside of a door that, you know, that top layer, I remember you guys said that no one was quite sure how that one worked. Those could be connected to her life force. Okay. All right, I'm just going to keep Rev on the line, actually, for a second while we while we puzzle this out some. And this lady has Taz? Yeah, uh, she's the one who is currently in possession of his soul and two others, and we're going to try to get him back, and I think our best way to do that might just be to take this lady out. Yikes. I, yikes, indeed. Uh, but on the plus side, a whole slew of artifacts for you to play with, because they're not going to have an owner anymore. How do you feel about a 33rd floor penthouse? <laughs> oh... I could picture it. (laughs) (laughs) So we're going to go back up there. She should let us back up there because she is expecting us Mm -hmm. with Damien's soul. Correct. Once we're up there, Damien, you got to come with us. I mean, I guess you don't have to, but it would really be handy if you were there to help back us up. All right. We get back in there. We get a look at her. We try and figure out what the hell she is. And then hopefully we can kill her. All right, so is there anything else you guys want to do before you head back? Mm, no, I think I, we want to kind of do this like right now. Yeah, I, mean, I think this we just is, need to do it. <laughs> yeah, All right. This is going to put our investigation skills to the test, I think. All right. <laughs> so you guys head back to the building. Uh, you walk up to the front door. The doorman recognizes you. you weren't, it wasn't too long ago that you left. He lets you in. You guys get inside the elevator, and Damien kind of looks around and leans against the far side of the elevator trying to see, like, he's, like, trying to press his body up against the area where the buttons are. <laughs> Uh, and I've just got my hammer in hand, like, ready to go. God, I'm so nervous about this. I Like, out of character. Oh, my God, I'm so nervous. Mm-hmm. The elevator door opens up, and she is standing there. You finished already. And she starts to turn, and she sees Dave. I try to stab her with the knife, like, oh, my God, no. All right, roll kick some ass. Oh, my God, I hate this. Eight. You lunge out of the elevator, and you jam this dagger into her. And she looks surprised, and then she looks angry. TJ, what are you doing? I am going to rip the necklace off her neck. Roll Act Under Pressure to reach around Jake and grab the necklace. Ten. You jump onto Jake's back like a howler monkey and just reach over his shoulder, and you wrap your fingers around the necklace around her neck, and you yank it off, and the clasp on the back breaks. And it is in your hand now. Awesome. You guys see Damien bolt out of the elevator and leap over the stairs to the second floor. Okay. I have decided to trust this guy. I can't just stop now. As Damien runs by, the pieces start to click and she wraps a hand around your wrist and starts to squeeze. And you take one point of damage. It is not armor defeating, but you can tell she's got something going on. Okay. Like, I've got the knife in one hand, hammer in the other. I want to raise the hammer with that other hand, and I just want to try and break her wrist off. Like, the one that she's grabbing me with, just take it off. All right, roll kick some ass. Come on, baby, do it. That is a 12. And with my advanced kick some ass, I get an enhanced effect. All right, so what are you picking? Uh, I guess double the normal harm if I'm really committed to just, like, breaking her off. So you bring this hammer down on her wrist that is grabbing a hold of you, and you hear a very dry crunch, and the hand is still on your wrist, and you look down, kind of horrified at the sound it makes, and as you look at the hand, it starts to dry up, and the fingernails grow longer, and the skin gets really thin, and you see that her whole facade has just rapidly aged, and she opens her mouth, and all of these scarabs start pouring out of her mouth, and she deflates, and these scarabs start to move as a group towards the stairs. Oh, oh, it's the mummy. I've seen the mummy. It's like the mummy. TJ, do something. <laughs> <laughs> that is a perfectly rational request. Oh, if only I had the vacuum thing with me. Oh, I could just vacuum up all these scarabs. <laughs> and turn them into delicious tropical mist. That's right. 
uh, but instead, I guess I'm just going to have to electroblast the hell out of these scarabs. All right, roll kick some ass. Yeah. Seven. As the scarabs start to skitter past you, you spin your electroblaster out and fire at them, and the shock jolts some of them into the air, and they land on you and Ah. start biting you. You take two points of damage. You see that a few of the beetles have been fried, but a large portion of them are still headed down the stairs. Uh, I just yell out, like, Damien, she's a beetle lady. Oh, God, she's a meter maid. (laughs) Not the time. Good one, but wrong time. (laughs) Trying to think of a way to to route beetles without just trying to smash them with my hammer, a way to stop a swarm. Roll read a bad situation. Not my strong suit. Six. You think their weakness is crawling into your mouth? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I've seen the mummy. The only way to stop them is to control them. (laughs) You think that the beetles are going down the stairs to try to get away from you and that you can probably corner them. Okay. That's what I'm going to try to do. As you start to chase down the stairs after the beetles, you hear Damien screaming. (laughs) Ah, uh, uh." Damien, is it the beetles? (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I regret all those jokes I made. This is real. It's a nightmare. There's like a door or something, right? Correct. Are they at it? So when you get to the bottom of the stairs, you find that Damien had jimmied the door open from the other side, and now he is covered in beetles. Okay. Bully. Love it. TJ, what are you doing? I'm going to look at the leftover strom and uh, oh, huh. <laughs> um, and check out that skin suit and see what she is. Possibly. All right, roll investigate a mystery. Ten. You get a hold two. What sort of creature is it? It is a mummy. And um, what can hurt it? So you are able to think back through the various texts you've seen at IPT while you were researching the Vercalacus and when you've researched other things. And you remember reading something about mummies. When their physical form is damaged... You can eat it like beef jerky. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) You can wear it like a suit. Like an agar suit. That the only way to destroy it completely is to destroy its organs. And that, like many people who have been mummified, they keep the organs in separate jars. And so you would have to find each jar and destroy the organ inside to completely kill the mummy. As long as any of those organs are still intact, it can find a host and essentially feed the beetles to it and take possession of that body. A dead body or just any body? Any body. Oh, oh. Uh, So I convey that to Jake. Jake, uh, if you find a bunch of organs inside jars, destroy them. It's a mummy. Okay. I can't imagine that there are any on this second floor. That would be much hubris, but it can't hurt to look around real quick. As you look past Damien, who is swarming with beetles (laughs) and screaming... You do in the back corner of the room, you see a glass jar with a pair of breathing lungs inside of it. Wow. Okay. I'm trying to think of how to even help Damien when he's being swarmed by beetles. I want to go like grab Damien and just try and like shake the beetles off of him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Roll protect someone. Uh, seven. You pick up Damien and you start to shake him violently, trying to get the beetles off of him. And as everyone, I think, imagines, they just travel down his body onto your arms and start swarming around your body and up your neck. Okay. And I'm like, the lungs, there's lungs in a jar over there. Go destroy them. Uh, And he gets up and he runs over and he picks up the jar and smashes it on the ground and then just starts stomping on the lungs. Excellent. TJ, what are you doing? I'm going to go ahead and destroy some of those runes on the third floor. So I'm just going to go to the room uh, just off the lobby there. So you go into it and there is a very large coat room. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go towards the back. According to the blueprints, that's where the ruin is at. Rule investigate a mystery. Eleven. You get a hold too. What is being concealed here in the matter of the runes? In the far corner of the room on the ceiling, you can see that a piece of wood has a latch on it that can be pulled open. Okay, uh, I'm going to open it up then. And inside of it is a magic rune carved into some stone connected to the roof. What can hurt it? As with some of the runes you've encountered in the past and some of the circles and magic devices, you need to break the carving. You need to find a way to make a score on it that disrupts the symbol created there. Uh, I pull out my screwdriver and 
jam it at that rune to see if I can mar it up. And it does. The glow on it ceases once you create a scratch across the letters inscribed on it. Nice. Jake, you are covered in scarabs. (laughs) I, man, I have a thing I want to do so bad, but I'm just positive I'm going to die if I do. I was like, I'm going to jump in the elevator shaft and then teleport into the inky blackness of space. (laughs) Just, Just get a deep breath and just teleport into space and teleport right back, but long enough that a bunch of beetles will just die because i imagine their tiny bodies will freeze through a little bit quicker than mine will but i will die so i'm not going to do it and stop drop and roll just seems ineffective as you're pondering this you hear a very deep growl okay i am going to use my stun knuckles that i don't think i ever actually ended up using and i am going to shock my own armor so that everything that's on me takes the charge and hopefully all these bugs get zapped. So how many damage does the stun knuckles do? They do two. Uh, I don't think you need to roll kick some ass for this. So you take two points of armor-defeating damage, since it's obviously inside of your armor. But yes, the beetles get this electrocution, and they all fall off of you, and a number of them die from that. And some of them start to scurry towards the room where you heard the growling. Okay. Has Damien finished stomping the lungs yet? He's just still kind of going. How do I know when to stop? Are they still breathing? No. Okay, they're probably gone. There's a big, big dog with three heads down here, Damien. We needed a special thing to deal with that. Oh. Come on, get back up. We need to get back up to the third floor for the moment. All right. And he turns around and he starts to run back towards the stairs. I'm like, I'm waiting for him to get to the stairs and then I'm going to go up with him and I'm going to shut the the thing behind us. Roll act under pressure. 11. So Damien comes sprinting around the corner. He jumps through the doorway up the stairs. You turn around and you pull the door shut. And as you do, a huge weight crushes against the door, closing it for you the rest of the way. And you hear scratching and the gnashing of teeth on the other side. All right, let's go up. Like as we go up the stairs, I'm just like, I high five him. I'm like sick, one down and a bunch of beetles are down there. And I killed some of them, so this seems like it's going relatively well. Uh, Let's go find out what TJ's achieving. All right, and you guys get to the top of the stairs as TJ comes out of the room where the first rune was destroyed. Uh, I've scratched up one rune. All right, awesome. We need to get into her living quarters over here to get two of the runes and whatever's going to stop the dog, I assume. Right. Um, I haven't tried the door. Yeah, I'll go just try the door. It opens. Okay, maybe just taking her out of her physical form stopped this. Possibly. I'm going to go towards one of the corners for the runes. All right. The closest one or the further one? Yeah, the closest one sounds like fun. Um, Before he actually like walks away, before I follow him through, I want to just be like, hey, just come back through the door real quick. I'll try to go back through the door. He can. Okay, go for it. And then whichever one he doesn't go to, I will go to. All right. So TJ heads into the bedroom and Jake heads into the media room at the end of the hallway. Cool. I'm going to look for the rune. Yeah, you see a similar wooden panel on the ceiling. I, and I yell that out to Jake. Look for the wooden panel. Uh, you just open it up. The runes in there just marred up somehow. Cool. So you uh, pulled on the panel. Mm-hmm. Jake, you do see one in the media room, and you're able to pull it down and mar it up with very little effort. Cool. All right. That was easier. Uh, TJ, look for something that smells the way a dog wants things to smell. I'm going to go get the last rune. <laughs> I guess I'm looking for some kind of spray bottle or a perfume bottle or something like that. On a small shelf right next to the door that leads back into the foyer is a purple bottle with one of those fancy spritzers on it. I'm going to take the bottle, but I'm not going to spray it on me just yet. So you come back out into the foyer and Damien is standing by the wall looking at a piece of art there. Hey, Damien, did you happen to see any jars of... uh organs or anything oh uh, yeah i stomped one real good downstairs nice um have you seen any more since no but i mean i've only been here in the foyer gotcha um i'm gonna actually go back into the room and i'm gonna look for jars all right jake so you get into the final room where she usually holds her meetings mm-hmm. and inside of that room you see the same wooden panel all right i'm gonna muck it up all right and then teleport back out of the room into the foyer and you appear back in the foyer hell yes team yay phase one complete yeah tj roll investigate a mystery to try to see what else is in her living quarters 
Uh, that would be 13. You get a hold too. What is being concealed here in the sense of the jars? In the bedroom behind the main painting, there is a safe. Jake, I found a safe. I need some assistance. Okay. How so? I'm not... Uh, can you rip this open for me, please? Oh boy, I can try. Roll no limits. Seven. Uh, what is your consequence? Uh, I think I take minus one forward. I imagine that it just... I hurt my shoulder for a moment. <laughs> it's going to take a sec, like... I need I'm gonna suffer a little bit yeah you rip the door open on this and inside of it is a jar with a beating heart take it and smash that shit yeah you smash it to the ground and the glass goes through the heart and it stops beating nice did you find the dog perfume I found this purple bottle I don't know if it's dog perfume or not but it was in a pretty important place right there by the door in front of the foyer so i just want to spritz it on something just kind of see what it smells like it smells minty with a aftertaste of the summer's wind (laughs) (laughs) but (laughs) most importantly whatever i sprayed it on doesn't just start dissolving right correct you got pretty close to her in that initial scuffle and it smells like her okay i'm gonna spray some on myself okay i'm gonna go test this okay good luck Uh, And I teleport back down outside the door down there. As you appear, you feel six eyes fall upon you and you hear heavy breathing and you see what looks mostly like a very dense shadow with eyes walking towards you. And then it stops and it seems to sniff the air and then it sits. Good boy. So is it like made of shadow? Yeah. Interesting. But it's corporeal. Mm -hmm. I want to pet it. It lays down and rolls over on its back. All right, I call back up. Okay, that's the stuff. Spray that on yourselves and and we can get past the dog. And he's a good dog. I'm just scratching behind his ears. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll spritz myself with the, the, the spray and then I'm going to hit uh, Damien with it. Yeah, and you guys uh, head down the stairs and the dog does not react negatively to your presence. Nice. Uh, let's keep looking around this place. Um. Are there any artifacts in this room? So indicated on the map, there are four circles on the second floor, and these were objects that she had out for display. And the set of lungs that were destroyed was on the back. So there are three other pedestals that have items sitting on them. Cool. Um, I want to check them out. So you head over to the one next to the smashed lungs, and there is a book on it. Ooh, a book. Um, from what I gather of magic... It's very dangerous to touch magic tomes in books, so I'm not even going to try and attempt to touch it. Hey, Damien. Yeah. Hey, uh, check out this book over here. Um, Do you think this is important? Well, I mean, title's interesting enough. What is it? The Facts Behind the Fairy Tales, and it looks very old. Cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in my backpack. All right. Uh, And then I'm going to go over to the next pedestal, check what that is. There is a leaf that has gold veins running through it. I want to use my uh, goggles to examine it. It is. It's magical. Nice. I'm going to pick it up and collect it. And as you're doing that, Damien's going over to the last pedestal and picking something up. What do you got over there, Damien? Oh, it's uh, some kind of a chain. And I'm going to look at it with the EM. Uh, it's got magic in it. Oh, uh, be careful. It's it's magical. And as you say that, he starts swinging it around and fire appears on it. And once he slows down swinging it, the fire goes out. Is that a fire chain? Can I see the chain while I'm petting the dog? Can I see yeah. him? Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen to be the chain I had as a Cenobite, does it? It is. Oh, no. <laughs> what is this? From something or... Yeah, our Halloween spooktacular. I beg your pardon. We all got turned into the things we were dressed as because of a genie, and I got turned into Hellraiser, and I had crazy hell chains. Oh, yeah. And that is one of them. They were supposed to be wished out of existence. Oh, that would make this a super rare artifact if it was supposed to, like, stop existing, and it didn't. Well, I mean, I think technically it was mine, so I bequeath it to you. Yeah, all right. But be careful, because Hostile Takeover Greg is out there, and he wants revenge. Somebody check Herkless's room. I guess I'll do that. You go into Herkless's room and it is very dark in here. I pull out my flashlight. And you flash around the room and you can see that there's not much in here. But in the corner, there is a very small jar. I'm going to pick it up and uh, take a look at it with the light. 
inside of it is a kidney. I'm going to smash that on the ground and step on it. Yeah, you smash this kidney and head back out into the main floor. Uh, Yeah, there was a kidney in there. I smashed it, guys. It's totally gone. That's three out of what? I don't know like how many jars this person has. I mean, major organs. We've gotten rid of heart, lungs, kidney. I assume there'll be a brain somewhere. Maybe a stomach? I mean, we'll find out. Could there be anything else on this floor? What else is around here? Uh, Well, take a look. Uh, there's supposed to be a room behind Hercules's room, according to the blueprints. All right, you check that, and I will check the other corner. Okay. I'm I'm going to make sure, like, as I walk away from the dog, like, stop petting him, like, make sure that he's still good. Yeah, he seems to be fine. Okay. So, TJ, you head to the room that is behind Hercules's room, uh, and the door is locked. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to see if I can't jimmy the lock open with one of my tools. Yeah, you have no problem. I'm going to go inside and, and look around, see what cool things are there. You open the door and shine the flashlight inside, and the light catches on some metal in the corner of the room. Okay, I'm going to go over and investigate the metal. You take a step into the room, and your flashlight shines on this metal, and something seems curious about it. And as you start to wonder what this is, from the shadows comes a giant metal set of battle armor. The little light in the room is bouncing off of the metal, and it takes a slow step towards you, and from deep inside of the armor, you hear a voice. Oh, TJ, you done fucked up. <laughs>